Over 80% of the millionaires in the world are self-made. Now, this means that they were not born into wealth, but rather they created it themselves through a combination of self-discipline, consistency, and smart investments. In the US, this percentage climbs to 90%. Now, to be completely honest with you guys, this kind of contradicts the view that I held for most of my life. I mean, for the longest time, I thought the majority of wealthy people were actually born in wealthy families. But as soon as I learned that this is absolutely not the case, I made it my mission to learn exactly how those individuals were able to achieve such levels of success. And by tapping into their mindsets and habits, I was able to radically change my own life for the better. It took me six years to achieve financial independence, and I come from a lower middle class family, so I know for a fact that this is doable. I became increasingly more productive, and ever since then, I basically just stopped worrying about the wrong things. So in this video, I thought it would be interesting to share with you guys what some of those habits are and how you can apply them to your own life. Habit number one is know what your finished building looks like. Now, as some of you guys probably already know by now, I am an architect. And whenever we start construction on a new project, we already know exactly what the finished building will look like. We know how much it'll cost and how long it'll take to build. Even before we break ground, every single detail of the structure, whether it be a skyscraper or a house, has already been carefully planned and designed. Now, your financial goals are that building. So if you want to start construction, you first need to know exactly what you want the result to look like. Now, for the longest time, I told myself that I wanted to be wealthy and have lots of freedom, but I never really defined what wealth and freedom meant to me. And so because I didn't have a clear goal, I spent most of my 20s just moving around in circles and wasting lots of time and energy. And that's when I actually decided to put my architectural mindset to work and I started to think of my goals the same way I think of a project. And so I dedicated a lot of time to clearly define where it is that I wanted to go. So for me, for example, ever since I was a kid, I knew that I wanted a big house and a big family and I also knew that I wanted to have lots of free time to be able to spend entire weekends building Legos with my future kids. Now I know that this doesn't sound super ambitious or glamorous but it is honestly what I wanted forever. But it wasn't until a few years ago that I actually started to think deeply about this goal and what exactly it would take to make it a reality. And ever since then, my work has been far more methodical and my energy has been channeled far more efficiently to the point where every single day that goes by gets me a little closer to that image that I've been visualizing since I was a kid. There is a great quote by Zig Siglar that illustrates this perfectly and it goes, a goal properly set is halfway reached. Now, if you don't know what your goals are, it'll be very difficult to know what steps to take and which steps go in which order. In other words, every successful project needs a plan and clearly defining your goals with as much detail as possible will help you design a path to get there. Habit number two is set a clear time frame and stick to it like your future depends on it. Now, this one actually hits really close to home to me because it took me forever to realize that if I didn't set a clear time frame to achieve any of the goals I mentioned before, I was never going to get there. And if we have to be absolutely honest guys, I think we in part do this on purpose to avoid taking action and possibly failing in the process. So you see, procrastination is to some degree a form of self-defense mechanism. And the way in which we self-sabotage our goals is by giving ourselves an infinite amount of time to accomplish an extremely vague objective. So you see, if we have forever to accomplish something, then we're not failing. We just haven't done it yet. And that's because the more time you give yourself to achieve a goal, the more likely you are to never achieve it. So if you want to move forward financially, professionally, or even personally, you need to know exactly what your goals are and then set a realistic time frame to get there. And if you later assess that the time is maybe not enough, then don't just postpone the results, but rather try to find alternative ways to actually get there. Having a timeline basically forces you to be creative and think outside the box to find the routes and the solutions that will get you where you want to be in time. Habit number three is embrace feeling uncomfortable. Now, I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, even if you're not where you want to be financially, is most likely comfortable, easy, or at least familiar, and therefore not intimidating at all. Now, this sense of comfort is what keeps most people trapped in the rat race. The fear of uncertainty and doubt of what will happen if I quit my job or if I invest my savings or if I just move to another town in search of better opportunities. That is what paralyzes most 
those people and convinces them that the dangers of leaving the comfort zone are simply not worth the risk. But if you want to be in a different place than you are right now, then you need to do things in a different way. And this is where you'll have to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, are you where you want to be financially or not? And trust me when I tell you guys that you'll have to be brutally honest because you wouldn't believe the lengths people go to convince themselves they are in a place they want to be, even though they're really not. Sometimes it's easier to lie to yourself than to accept that, you know, maybe you're just being lazy and not living up to your full potential. Admitting that is hard and therefore most people would rather stick with a lie than having to face reality. So if you want to be in a different place financially, then you'll have to embrace the uncertainty that comes with leaving the comfort zone. It'll be uncomfortable, you'll feel out of place and maybe even lost or confused at the beginning. Trust me, I've been there. But believe me when I tell you guys that the sooner rather than later, you're going to feel incredibly happy that you took that risk. Habit number four is adopt the millionaire pyramid mindset. Now, this ties to the previous point. Whenever you encounter an obstacle in your journey to financial success, think about it like this. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So that's when you need to adopt the pyramid perspective, which basically means understanding that the journey's difficulty is inversely correlated to how many people will reach the top. The harder the path becomes, the more people are going to give up on the way, and the higher you climb, the narrower the pyramid will get. When difficulties arrive, the more and more people will give up, and at the end, only the ones who are aware of this and show the persistency and consistency to continue to climb regardless of the obstacles are going to be the few to reach that top. But here's the caveat, because fewer and fewer people will actually successfully navigate those obstacles, the higher you climb, the fewer competition from others you'll encounter and therefore the higher the rewards will be. If you make it all the way to the top, then basically all the rewards go to you. The point being that everyone is going to face difficulties along the way and you might feel that what you're facing specifically, I mean your specific circumstance, is much harder than what everyone else is feeling. But here's the trick. Everyone feels the same way about their own problems compared to other people's problems. So you see, it's not really about how hard you think what you're dealing with is. It's about how you face that hardship and whether or not you're able to overcome it. So think about it this way. Every time you face a challenge, you're essentially being given a chance to prove that you're part of that very small percentage of people who actually succeeds. Thinking about this usually fills me with the motivation to continue to push through and conquer the obstacles that I encounter. And if you do the same, you'll most likely get the same results. Habit number five is focusing on the solution and not the problem. Now, this ties to the previous two points, and it is seeing the opportunity where others see an obstacle. Focus on the solution instead of the problem. Now, I've noticed this very specific trait on every single successful person I've ever met before, and that is that whenever they face a challenge, they react in a very particular way. They do not get frustrated or angry or resentful, but rather they get excited, as if having to deal with a problem would somehow how fun or entertaining for them. Now, at the beginning, I actually thought I was in the presence of some weird psychopaths that seemed to enjoy suffering, but I very quickly noticed the results that they were obtaining when reacting like that to those problems. And the real revelation came when I compared those results to those of individuals who didn't react like that and instead would get frustrated and give up. And that's when I realized that there is a very analytical and cool-headed reason to feel excited about a problem. And that is that if you remove the negative emotions from the equation and instead see the problem as an opportunity to grow or learn or improve something about yourself, then you come up on top every single time and you gain a massive advantage over almost everyone else. So you see, at the end of the day, they saw the problem as an opportunity to get ahead in life. And this change in mindset completely altered the course of my life. I became more optimistic and analytical and overall my perspective on things improved for the better. So those are the five things that probably had the biggest impact in my own journey to becoming financially independent, which was a goal of mine ever since I was in high school. Now granted, I didn't incorporate every single one of these habits simultaneously, but once I did, my life changed completely and I know they can do the same for you. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.